as you place your right hand over your heart. While all veterans may render their hand salute, we advise you to join with Grammy and Emmy award-winning country group, Little Big Town, as they honor America, and we salute our troops around the world with the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale championship game is the owner and founder and former NFLer Jerry Richardson hits the drum on the field keep pounding that's what they say around here Linus had his security blanket Troy and I have him Mike Pereira rules expert Bill Vinovich is our referee in this game you can almost throw out the regular season numbers for Vinovich because it's an all-star crew. But what you can't throw out is we probably won't have very many penalties. Penalties in the playoffs going into today down 30 percent more than two holding calls less per game. So I think is that a result of a crew concept being all-star or is it the fact that two of today's team both teams are two of the lowest penalized teams in the league. Maybe there's no coincidence that they end up as the final two in the NFC. Spanish language broadcast available on both Fox Deportes and by utilizing SAP on our broadcast. Arizona won the toss. They receive early look at Carson Palmer as Gano drives it. Time for the league lead in touchbacks and Gano pounds it out of the back of the end zone. And here comes Carson Palmer. You know the story by now and all the conversation about the year he had. He finally won his first playoff game. There's his number since 2014. Troy has been through two ACL tears. He's been through nerve damage in his shoulder that went down into his throwing hand. He did enough to get the win last week over Green Bay. What kind of gut feel did you get when we met with him yesterday? Well, I got the feeling that they're going to cut it loose, but this notion that just because he finally got a playoff win that that's going to settle him down and not create any butterflies today, I think that's a mistake. From the 20, it's a handoff to the rookie, David Johnson. He gets maybe a yard, and they love him. Cam Newton calls that kid Captain America. His name is Luke Keekley, and he may very well be the best linebacker in the NFL. Here's the offensive line. A big upgrade over a year ago for the Arizona Cardinals is the pro bowler, Mikey Potty. Yeah, I think those three interior guys, they have their work cut out for them in this ball game. And whether or not they're going to be able to afford Carson Palmer time to take advantage of some of the matchups that he likes out there at the skilled position. Here's a toss to Johnson running right. 
Finnegan up from the secondary to make the stop. And it'll be third down and relatively long, a gain of two by David Johnson. This defense is terrific up front. Remember, K1 short. We'll talk about him seemingly all night long. Well, you look at that defensive front, they really set the tone last week in that win against Seattle. And here on the first two plays of this game, Arizona wanting to get that running game going, struggled with it last week. And they've got nothing to show for it after two snaps. Third down and seven, Palmer protected, airs it out too high for Michael Floyd, and he had Floyd who found the void in that zone defense, and Palmer overshot him. Yeah, and that's how he started last week's game. Carson Palmer's not a guy who usually misses high. He's able to drive the ball into those windows, and yet his first pass of today's game, it sails on him once again. Drew Butler to punt, three and out to start the day for Arizona in their second champ game. The former Cardinal Ken with a little room to run. And that room closed down in a hurry. Fua was in there to make the stop after a six yard return. And now we will watch Cam Newton who gets a reaction from anybody watching NFL games. And what he told us is when his career is over, he wants to be able to look back and say when I played, I had fun. And I don't think anybody has more fun playing this game the number one for Carolina. Not only did he want to look back and say that he had fun, but he wants those that are watching him now to see that he's having fun. I don't think anybody questions how much fun he's having playing this position, and he should. When you consider the year that he has had, it's been a pretty amazing year for him. First quarterback to have 30 or more touchdown passes, 10 or more rushing touchdowns. Handoff is to Stewart. And Stewart, who started last week's game with that 59-yard carry against Seattle, gets four this time as Morrow makes the stop. We look at this offensive line. That kid at right guard is good. He's only 22 years old, but it centers around Ryan Khalil. Yeah, he's the leader up front. He's the one who sets protections, makes the calls, helps out Cam Newton. This offensive line really has been the heartbeat of this football team this year. Second and six, first throw, pass caught, Corey Brown. And in two plays inside Arizona territory, that one good for 14 yards. Well, it's a well-run route. Cam Newton has time in the pocket, and with the man coverages, you're going to see a lot of that from Arizona. Things opened up right in the middle of the field, right in front of Cam Newton, and it's just a matter of driving the ball in. Arizona defense lost a tremendous player in Tyron Matthew. And he went on IR tearing his ACL late in the game at Philadelphia on the 20th of December. He's still trying to patch that hole. Here's Cam. He keeps it instead of handing it to Whitaker. And Cam fights forward for a yard and a half. Kevin Minter is in on the stop. This defense is coordinated by a 37-year-old James Betcher. Leas Campbell was there when the Arizona Cardinals went to the Super Bowl in the 2008 season. How about Dayon Buchanan? He is a little inside linebacker, but man, is he tough. Yeah, he is tough. We talked to him last night. He says he just loves being around the football, and it's pretty obvious. He was drafted as a safety, but for a 210-pound linebacker now, he is as physical as there is. Second and nine, four men on the rush. Newton to the sideline, that's Ginn. And the Arizona Cardinal for one year, Ted Ginn has 13 yards and a first down. This is probably going to be a matchup that we're going to see throughout this game. Patrick Peterson matching up on Ted Ginn, and Ted Ginn has terrific speed. And once you get a guy threatened down the field, it's hard then to come out of that and cover. And you see the separation that Ginn is able to create by threatening Patrick Peterson deep. Did not have a catch a week ago against the Seahawks. Right off the bat, Cam Newton going after their best corner, St. Peterson. From the 35, out of the backfield, it's Stewart. And a quick tackle by Peterson. A gain of three. 
Jonathan Stewart missed the final three games with a sprained foot. Been dealing with an ankle injury he suffered here at home against Seattle last week. And Ron Rivera, boy, has he grown as a head coach in his fifth year. Survived a seven and nine season year two. His team will roll in second and seven. Contrary. Good move and a nice spin as Buchanan makes the tackle again at five. Then on the other side, there's Bruce Arians, who is 63 years old, one and one in his career in the postseason. Finally got a chance in the NFL as the fill in head coach for the cancer battling Chuck Pagano a couple of years ago in Indianapolis. Year three in Arizona. And his big phrase is no risk it, no biscuit. He likes to push it. Offensively and defensively, here's a third and two. Newton. Incomplete, broken up by Jefferson as he got the hand in there to knock it away from Greg Olson, and that's a nice stop on third and short. And Tony Jefferson, he's had to do more with the injury to Tyron Matthew, and they run the slant route to Greg Olson, and he's their leading receiver. Excellent coverage. Has the right hand on Olson. Good no call, in my opinion. But they split him out, do a lot of different things with him. He's a tough matchup, but Jefferson plays it beautifully. You know, from 45 yards, having a tough time on special teams Arizona has to take a timeout and that won't sit well with BA as they call him and if Cam Newton has fun playing the position of quarterback I don't think anybody's having more fun playing the role of head coach than Bruce Arians man he lets it hang out he is a great quote but when we talked to Carson Palmer he said he is not what you guys think he is you think he's the fun <laughs> uncle with the yeah. Party the guy you want to hang out with in the corner. Maybe that's the case at a party, but for this team He is a grinder and he's hard on him. He's intense I mean he wants it done his way and he demands that it gets done that way and he lets you know if it doesn't But when you talk to the players both with the Cardinals and then those that he's coached elsewhere Boy, they all love playing for him. He's very honest very direct and he gets his point across so 45 yards from Gano Had a great year 30 for 36, and this one is good. And the first point's put up by a smiling Graham Gano. Here at home, the number one seeded Panthers lead 3 zip. Aerial coverage provided by Nationwide. Congratulations to their spokesman, Babe Manning, moving on to the Super Bowl. What a game that was. 20 to 18 was the final in that battle. Mile High City with the New England Patriots. Yeah, that was a great game. Denver's defense, they showed up. Boy, they knocked Tom Brady around a lot. But congratulations to Gary Kubiak and, yes, Peyton Manning. And who knows, this may be it for him. You know, we'll kick it away. He's got one touchback. He's got two. Cam Newton on that first possession went four for five, hit four different receivers. It was Stinson who was late in getting off. That's why the Cardinals had to take a timeout. His fault, 3 0 Carolina. Second possession for Arizona. First one went three and out. And not to make too much of it, but for Carson Palmer with all that pressure. Some put on by Carson Palmer. He needs to settle in and get off to a good first half start here on the road. 3 0 Carolina. I think they're blitzing. To the ground and down goes Carson Palmer at the end of it. There is a flag down on the far side of the field. Let's get the call from Bill Vinovich. Ball start. Offense number 70. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And these Cardinals with their first NFC West title since 2009. See a false start from Bobby Massey at right tackle. And he's right on the end of the line there. You can see, and then left tackle Jared Valdir, he got walked right back into the lap of Carson Palmer, and Valdir coming off a game that he struggled, didn't play particularly well last week against Green Bay, and he's the one who gave up the pressure right into Carson Palmer. They back out of the blitz, Palmer 
gets a hit to the helmet, airs it out. It is nearly picked. John Brown the target, Robert McClain, who was added to the roster in mid-December, almost pulled it in. Well, Coney Ely is getting the start with Jared Allen injured, and he's one-on-one -on -one with the left tackle, Valdir. He puts the pressure on Palmer. They still have a shot. It's a ball that gets away from Palmer as he's trying to drive it to the deep post. And McLean almost makes a heck of a play on that ball. But Coney Ely gives them a little bit more burst off the edge than they were getting from Jared Allen. They lose the experience, of course, with Allen not in the lineup. Just get it away on second and 15. Palmer into the ground again for the tight end, Darren Fells. Well, this is a rough start. We're certainly seeing. There's Jared Allen. We're, we're seeing pressure. And that's the storyline coming in. Is there going to be time for Carson Palmer? But there's pressure, but he's able to get inside of that. Thompson lays out John Brown over there on the sideline, but Carson still had a chance to make the completion, which should not have been a difficult throw, and he just buries it right into the ground. One there, five line, sugar. Third down and 15. Here's Johnson's got a long way to go. Got to get to the 30. And we'll see where they mark him. They're going to give him enough. Kirk Coleman forces him out. And David Johnson, who the Arizona Cardinals feel can be as good as anybody in this league, running it, catching it, picks up 16. Yeah, and even Bruce Arians says the matchup problems that he creates. He has great appreciation for the coverage yeah. skills of these linebackers. For the Carolina Panthers, that time they split him out. But even from the backfield, he just thinks anybody on David Johnson is a mismatch in the Cardinals' favor. 14 yards after the catch, and now Johnson goes down to the backfield. Thomas Davis, who they love, survived three ACL tears to the same knee, a loss of two. What a good play. Now this shows you the kind of speed that Thomas Davis has, too, as he comes through, and then he runs it from behind. He goes untouched. He's able to make a play. Roman Harper, he's crowding the line as well. It's a hard defense to run the football against. Second and 12. Play action. Palmer steps into it. Airs it out. Nelson overthrown. They're trying to throw it downfield, but so far Carson Palmer has yet to connect. Yeah, they've taken a couple shots here on this possession, and Bruce Arians, you see that big call sheet that he has. They script the first 30 plays, and within that, they've got about a half a dozen deep shots. We've seen a couple now already. Had some opportunity, as you're going to see J.J. Nelson, one of the fastest guys really in the league. He's got a step. Ball just too far out in front of him. Third down and 12. Come on. Blitz. Palmer in trouble. Throws short for the target, Michael Floyd. It's fourth down. And they were in the face of number three. Well, they're going to bring pressure off of the edge. A nice plan here. They bring the rush here, and they drop out Keekley. They don't handle it very well on the left side of the offensive line. Upati does, but Valdir, he is struggling here in the early going. He doesn't come off of that and pick up the blitzing. That was Finnegan coming on the blitz, and Carson Palmer has started one for six. Back inside the 20, it's Ginn. Room. And slides down. Butler makes sure that he's down and touched. And they are going to mark him at the spot where the punter, Drew Butler, made the tackle. Ted Ginn almost burned his former team. Good for 33. And the Panthers up three, have it. Carson Palmer trying to figure it out on the sideline. He's completed only one pass. And it has that same feel to his start last week at home against Green Bay. Meanwhile, Carolina started more drives an opponent's territory 33 than any other team in the NFL. What? What? They start this one at the 49 of Arizona. Up three. Stewart spinning, falling as he made the catch, a gain of two. Bruce Arians during the break was really upset.
after the coverage on the punt. And it could be for this from Teddy Williams. As he got into the chest and the back and the side of Britton Gold. Yeah, that's what he's having a discussion with. And he's also not too pleased about the hit Shaq Thompson had on John Brown on that possession, which should have been a penalty. Here's Stewart. Buchanan whiffs on the tackle, and Jonathan Stewart picks up six. Kevin Minter on the stop, third and two coming up. You, know, you talk about the, the field position that they're provided here on this possession and, and how many points they scored this year. Number one scoring offense, and yeah, they've been good on offense. I mean, they create a lot of big plays, but that defense has had a lot to do with it. And then, of course, on this one, Ted Ginn with a great return. 33 yards, close to his season long, which was 37. Newton is so dangerous on third and short. He can beat you with his arm, obviously with his legs, and the play clock is winding down. Time out. The 2016 NFL Pro Bowl is coming up. Hall of Famer's Michael Irvin. So he has his cell. And Jerry Rice select the teams at the Pro Bowl draft on Wednesday, January 27th. And watch the Pro Bowl. Live from Aloha Stadium on Sunday, January 31st on ESPN at 7 Eastern. Go to NFL.com slash Pro Bowl to learn more. And there are a lot of Pro Bowlers out on the field tonight. None of them want to play yeah. in the game because that means they're headed to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and that, that would be great, of course. But on the other hand, you take a guy like Thomas Davis, who's been in the league as long as he has been, and this is his first time to be voted to the Pro Bowl. I can tell you, having voted to it, it's a great honor and it's a great trip. The game for quarterbacks, maybe not so much, but that trip to Hawaii is pretty awesome. So, did, they, did you ever get sacked in a Pro Bowl? Did I get sacked? Are you kidding? It was touch open football. Game, open game on quarterbacks over oh, there. there. Oh, yeah. You get deported if you do that now. <laughs> Third down and two. There's Freeney, 54. He's been a force. <laughs> Backpedaling as he throws, and there's Olsen with a catch. And that great combination of Newton to Olsen, good for a first down at 13 yards. You see this every week when you watch Cam Newton. The throws that he's able to make, he can drive the ball to any spot on the field from really any platform within the pocket. He's got some pressure. He's on his back foot, and yet he's still able to drive it with a safety barreling down on Olsen. And those two have been quite a combination since they made the trade for Greg Olson. Let's see who gets the flag. Encroachment. Defense number 93. Five yard penalty. Still first down. There's the penalty. Was on Calais Campbell. Yeah, I didn't see much from Ryan Khalil there at center. I think Calais Campbell's trying to say that he's given the head bob, but that's what drew him off. It was the Hall of Famer, the great Sid Gilman, who said the great quarterbacks make a defense defend every blade of grass. And that's what Cam Newton does week after week. Sid Gilman was the passing architect. I'd, I'd believe anything he said. Stewart, Frosty Rucker in there to make the stop. And in that, the beauty of Cam Newton, because of the strength of his arm, he makes the defense work on the far side of the field because he can drive it on a line to anybody anywhere out there on the field. Yeah, you know, most of these defensive backs, they worry about, you know, once the clock goes off, that a guy's not going to be able to get the ball as far down the field. That's not the case with Cam Newton. And, you know, he creates problems clearly because he is essentially a running back playing quarterback as big and as physical he is. It's the ultimate wildcat quarterback, but yet he can beat you from within the pocket that he has proven any doubters that he had that he could do that this year. Second down and three. About this little toss to Ginn. Ginn slowed down a bit, still going inside the 10. Gets a block, touchdown. A lot of 
of deception sometimes within this running game for the Carolina Panthers. You're going to see left guard Andrew Norwell. He's going to pull and make it look like it's going that way. But they pull Ryan Khalil, the center, out the opposite way. Now, even with that being said, tackle has to be made there. And he's able to traverse all the way across the field and get it into the end zone. Justin Bethel had a shot at him, couldn't bring him down. 10-0. The punt return by Ted Ginn of 33 yards set it up. So when you return one for 33 and set it up, you have to carry it in. Got blocks on the edge, made a young girl smile, and a 10-0 lead for the number one seeded. Carolina Panthers. Last Teddy Ginn rushing touchdown was in December of 2008 with Miami at Kansas City. He carries one in here from 22 yards away and in this NFC Championship game prior to Super Bowl 50 he's just made a 10 zip. Well they're well they're familiar with him in Arizona. He was with them last year and like everywhere else he'd been mostly a special teams guy but Great in that area, but has contributed in so many other ways offensively for Carolina. Yeah, he's had a career year, 10 receiving touchdowns. Big part of the attack after Carolina lost Kelvin Benjamin, their second-year star on the outside camp. Well, what's it going to be, Arizona? Down 10-0. Thanks to Cam and company playing here at home. Arizona was 7-1 on the road. Carolina 9-0 this season at home and it was actually Arizona the number one offense in the NFL number two scoring offense and they better start looking like it fast 10 nothing Carolina quick throw Brown out on the edge breaks a tackle and John Brown is out of bounds near a first down and they're going to give him 11 it's anything that Bruce Arians can find right now to settle Carson Palmer into this game. Yeah, I think that was a run call at the line of scrimmage and then Carson just seeing one on one and he took it. You know, coming into this game, Bruce Arians really thought the four wide receiver sets would give them the best chance to run the ball. Tried that on the first possession. Two runs, only three yards to show for it. They're running more two tight end packages the last two possessions now. Here's a good throw to Larry Fitzgerald, who is beloved in the Valley of the Sun and even more so after his 176 yard day against Green Bay last week. Second and three. You see the tape there on Carson Palmer's index finger and some of these throws you just don't know how much is the finger bothering him. I know when we visited with him he said not at all. Jay Glazer he reported that in the pregame for us but he is still having to wear the tape, so obviously it, there's some discomfort there. On second and three, handoff is to Johnson, and the rookie drives for a first down. Tony Ely went for a little bit of a ride. And they know, as you said earlier, talking about Arizona, it's not going to be easy to run against Carolina, but they've got to stay with it even down 10 nothing here early. Well, you've got to maintain some balance. It's a lot like when you face Seattle, the way that this defense is built. They've had a hard time protecting Carson for the most part, but also with a 10-point deficit, now they're splitting Carson Palmer down here wide going Wildcat. And it's David Johnson. That didn't work, a game of two. So Palmer out wide to the left. Second down and eight coming up two and a half left in the opening quarter. I was going to say, I mean, you're having a hard time protecting your quarterback in the early part of this game, and Parsons a little bit erratic, and then you find yourself down 10 points. So this drive here, just trying to get something going. We, as we said, they like to take their shots. They had them on the previous possession, just unable to hit them. Another big set out there with two tight ends. Here's Fitzgerald. He's going to throw it. And he throws it out of bounds. John Brown was in the area. And it will bring up a third down. Third down and long after that trick play. And yeah. we've seen a lot of two tight end sets and a lot, not a lot of spread them out. 
and try and run it or spread them out and try and pick them apart. Yeah, they, you know, we saw the Wildcat, then they come back with the reverse to Fitzgerald and see if he can't maybe get a big play down the field. And that play really did not have a chance with the pressure immediately on Fitzgerald in the backfield. Third and eight. Palmer, sideline, broken up. And there's the all pro Josh Norman in front of John Brown. And number 24 closed on it in the blink. This is why Josh Norman's your all pro corner this year. You see the way he drives back on the ball. He's cluing the quarterback. But when you're playing a receiver like John Brown that could flat out run by you, and yet you're able to plant your back foot, drive on that, and almost come away with an interception. That's pretty impressive right there. Carson Palmer has started three for nine for 35 yards. Butler. Good point. Fair catch. Called in by Ginn inside the 15. In just six days, it's another huge UFC event on Fox. Anthony Rumble Johnson battles Ryan Bader plus heavyweights Barnett and Rothwell. It's live, it's free, it's this Saturday at 8 Eastern right here on Fox. Drive will start at the 12 for the Carolina Panthers. Cam Newton at the controls trying to become the sixth Heisman Trophy winner to be an NFL MVP. And join a list with Horning, OJ, Earl, Marcus, and Barry. Up 10 0. Earl! I got the impact. Good protection. Downfield for Brown on the throw. Corey Brown, who can really run. But Cam Newton overshot him by five or six yards. <laughs> I think Dave Shula is up there in the box. Or Mike Shula, excuse me, the offensive coordinator. And he says, well, hey, if they want to try to make some plays down the field, we'll make some plays as well. They try to hit one up the seam. They run a double move with Corey Brown. There's Mike Shula there, who's really done a heck of a job of Taking the skills of Cam Newton and marrying it with this running game and the passing game. And he says he comes into a game with more rushing plays than he's had at anywhere he's been. Hand off to Stewart. Well played up front by Arizona. And they need a quick three and out. Buchanan on the tackle, a gain of two. Third down coming up. And Cam Newton, who was number five in quarterback rating on third down during the regular season. Try and find a way to a first down. I think that really says it all there. Third down is a quarterback's down. It's a possession down, and these two quarterbacks have been two of the best all season long. 54 in it. In it. <laughs> Extra men on the rush. Newton steps into it. It's got Brown wide open. And Corey Brown is gone. 20, 10, touchdown Carolina. Here's the route here on a post, but you're going to see Rashad Johnson in the middle. And look at the move that Corey Brown puts on him. At the top of the route, he expects Brown to continue up the field and just completely gets turned around. And all that field out in front of him, and Cam Newton lays it out there beautifully. About third and eight, an 86-yard completion for a touchdown to Brown. And this Carolina team is flexing its muscles again here early. Last week they scored on their first four possessions. This week they have scored on their first three. This to make it 17 to nothing with under a minute left in the first quarter. We saw it last week against Seattle. So far, we've seen more of the same against Arizona here in the NFC Championship game. It's all the home team so far, and that means somebody's happy.
with a souvenir football as Cam gives it away up 17. Celebrating in Denver, Colorado. A 20 to 18 win by Peyton Manning and the Broncos over the New England Patriots. Guys in that defense are probably watching this thinking, man, Arizona is tough to slow down, and now Arizona, talking about Carolina rather, and Arizona, they're trying to figure some way out on the sideline. They cannot get in the face of Cam Newton at all. No, and they brought pressure on that last play and weren't able to get home, and Cam was able to double clutch it a couple times. And you know, when you bring extra rushers, you better be able to get home or you leave those guys on an island. They're in the secondary, but again, a really good route by Corey Brown that gets Rashad Johnson completely turned around for the big play. Well, let's remember this Arizona team was the number one offense. It was a record setting year individually and for the organization for Carson Palmer. Look at what's happened here. Early like it happened last week against the Seahawks, 17 to nothing. With time left in the first quarter. Another touchback off the right foot of Graham Gano. And let's go back to the touchdown. Hey, here's another look, and you're going to see the protection that Cam Newton has afforded. This offensive line really picks it up nicely, and he's holding the ball, holding the ball, double clutches it, and then is able to find Corey Brown on the deep crosser. But that route is excellent. He keeps his head down, and he gives every indication that he's going to stay up the seam. That's good work, and we showed the frustration, and we see it here. Both sides of the ball, it's not isolated to just the defense. This offense is frustrated, too. It's the longest pass completion in Carolina Panther history in the postseason, 86 yards. Here's Fitzgerald looking for a block. And well played by McLean. Thomas Davis. Both out there, Coleman in to clean up a gain of just two. The team speed for Carolina is really impressive, and so you start throwing those things. If you don't hit it right away, once you get the ball in your hands, it's hard. This is a hard defense to outflank, and the pursuit from inside out from those linebackers, three first-round picks, and they can run as good as any linebackers in football. Single, single, double, double. Second and eight. Johnson right side gets a seam and a nice run to pick up a first down as we close down the first quarter here in Charlotte. That good for 14 yards. The ground game's been a little better than the passing game for the Cardinals who trail by 17 on the road after one the NFC Championship game back after this. As we start the second quarter, Arizona with 58 yards. They have yet to cross midfield. Carolina has gone three possessions, three scores. There's an NFC Championship fact. Team trailing after one has won the last four NFC Championship games. This is a big hole for the Arizona offense to try and climb out of. Here's Johnson. Davis with a play out on the edge. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, just to give you a sense of what's happening for the Cardinals defense over here, obviously a lot like the Seahawks last week, just very frustrated that this game is out of hand so far right now. You see guys like Marcus Golden kind of losing on his coach, Brenton Buckner. They actually had to be separated. Guys trying to calm him down. Meanwhile, they're trying to go over missed assignments, trying to figure this whole thing out. They're just keeping, trying to keep their heads on straight, Joe. Right now the focus is on Carson Palmer on second and six. Johnson, rookie trying to take over this offense. Davis trying to rip it out, can't do it. Roman Harper is there for the tackle. And a big run by David Johnson for 24 yards. Well, Kyle Love, the defensive tackle for Carolina, he's able to get some pressure in the middle. But David Johnson, that's exactly where he was going to go with the football. He's able to cut back, break a tackle. He's had a couple nice runs now on this drive. He checks out, Andre Ellington checks in. First snap in Carolina territory. For the Cardinals. Ellington, the lane handoff, nothing. Latulale was in there. And he makes the tackle. 
You know, we've seen on this possession, Joe, is Shaq Thompson, their rookie linebacker, he's been opposite of Larry Fitzgerald on most of these snaps. They have stayed base. That time there was two tight ends, but earlier three wide receiver sets. Carolina has stayed base, and that's the flexibility that Shaq Thompson provides because he is so athletic and can really run. They, they view him almost like a big nickel type player. Play action. Palmer well protected. Floats it too high for a wide open Andre Ellington. And another missed throw by Carson Palmer. Another missed easy throw too, Joe. That's, you know, there's time in the pocket. This was another one of those shots. They're trying to get the ball down the field. Looks like they may have had an opportunity, but he comes underneath and he's able to complete that. There's a real good chance they pick up the first down there. Johnson back in there. Third down and 10. Bomber. Gets hit, down he goes. Balls out. Recovered by Keekley. Knocked out by Short. And the Panthers get a takeaway. There's a... This game could not have started any worse for Carson Palmer. We'll get another look at that when we come back. Right now, it's a turnover. And the Panthers take over up 17. Here's the call. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Carolina. Mike Pereira is to our side here. Looked like the ball was starting to come loose. Yeah, best look here, Joe. Watch it roll off the helmet. Just before it hits the ground, it rolls there. Just rolls away before the shoulder hits. Stands mean, of course, they couldn't prove it either way. And I think that's the right call. And Carson Palmer to the sideline. Wondering how it's going to turn around. It did last week. Carson Palmer had 74 yards passing at halftime up seven to six. The difference is his defense can't find any answers for Cam Newton on the other side. Yeah, no, he's not getting a lot of help. And interior wise, they're not handling the inside pressure of Carolina with Starla Tulele and of course Kwan Short. This Arizona defense needs to stop right here. Starting from the 38, protected again, passes wide for Greg Olson. Hey, if the devil decided to quit, where do you think he would go? Well, Los Angeles, of course, that's what happens in the new Fox show, Lucifer. He gives bad a good name. Series premiere tomorrow, right here on Fox. Well, this Carolina offense has been pretty good all year protecting the football, but Arizona defensively, second in the league, creating takeaways, and they need to come up with some kind of stop. Here is Stewart, nothing there. And Stinson sticks his nose in there to make a play. Third down and 10 coming up for Cam Newton. Good play by Stinson in his second year out of Alabama. Fifth round draft pick a year ago. Down and ten. <laughs> Newton backing up as he throws it out of bounds, and that time Arizona had pressure on Cam Newton. It's a quick three and out. Yeah, James Betcher, defensive coordinator, he said every week when he looks at the opponent, the first thing that he's studying is how can he bring pressure and get to the quarterback. Haven't been able to get there much in this game but on a big third down play and needing to make a stop he brings it once again and this time they get home and force cam to get rid of that ball already than they wanted patrick peterson waits for the punt from norton from just inside the 20 into a wall of tacklers joe webb Good utility player for the Panthers down to make the stop. Arizona's offense back to the field, down 17.
NFC Championship game continues. Roman Harper, who is the veteran the back end of this defense, 10-year pro out of Alabama, two-time pro bowler, and a guy who won a ring with the New Orleans Saints back in 2009 is out, got hit in the eye. And so Trey Boston takes his spot in the lineup. And there's the hit as the helmet moved and banged into the right eye of Roman Harper. Last time Arizona had it. Starting at the 21, here's a toss and what a play! Johnson is knocked to the turf by Thomas Davis. Flying in and a loss of six. Well, you're not kidding. They got pulling linemen and he hits it so fast, he just runs by everybody. You see him right here and he just shoots it as soon as he sees it and recognizes it. Fitzgerald's not able to make a play on him and he meets David Johnson right in the backfield. That's already the fifth tackle for Thomas Davis. This guy. Uh, consider what he's overcome and I think he's faster than he was before he had all the knee surgeries. Three torn ACLs. Just inside the 15, Palmer. Underneath it's David Johnson and he slides down near the 20. Last time Arizona came back from a 17 point deficit or more to win a game was in September of 1999 at Philly. Trailed 21 to nothing, won 25 to 24. But the last time the Cardinals looked like they did during the regular season was never. This was a record setting offense for the Cardinals led by Carson Palmer. Too many negative plays and too many times here in this first half you've been looking at downs like this third and long. Third and 11. Palmer protected has a man and has a first down J.J. Nelson. That may be the best throw we've seen from Carson Palmer yet. Well, I think Carson Palmer is a rhythmic thrower. That when his feet are underneath him and he's on time getting the ball out, and he hitches and turns it loose. The ball comes out accurately, and that's a good route on the outside. As I said, he's one of the fastest guys in the league. He's able to drive and push people off of him. He creates the separation, but Carson delivering it on time makes a good throw on third down. 15 yards on third and long. Short came across. Was he drawn? Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 99. Five yard penalty. Still first down. I see one official, Troy, overrule the other. I think what he sees is Ted Larson, the right guard. He's going to reach back and he's signaling to the running back what he's thinking in the blocking scheme they want short he sees everything he sees any kind of movement he's coming off the ball and that's what drew him off guy was a terrific high school basketball player could dunk as a freshman great athlete had an 11 sack season first and five here's johnson nowhere to go and a hand up on the face and that might draw a flag it looked like maybe a face mask there the way the head turned Flag is thrown. We'll get the call. Yeah, he was just, he was just across. Addison with a turn of the face mask and the helmet. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 97. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That's Mario Addison. So it adds 15 yards, and that will take the football. All the way inside Carolina territory after a two yard run. Addison will get more playing time in this game also with the loss of Jared Allen who has a broken bone in his foot. It was raring to go in this game but declared inactive. David Johnson right side. Good blocking out in front. Coleman can't bring him down initially. And a good run by David Johnson, who had been bottled up the last three weeks. Not so here tonight. Good for 15. A zone stretch play, and Larry Fitzgerald does a good job in blocking. And you know, Bruce Arians feels that he's the best blocking wide receiver in all of football. And 
uh, he can make a strong case for that. He's been good throughout his career. He takes a lot of pride in being able to make some of those types of blocks. He's able to get enough to allow David Johnson to pick up a nice game. He's carried that offense. So the number's 80 total yards. Gets it again, nothing. Thomas Davis again, tackle number six. David Johnson is a triplet. One of three, has two sisters, grew up in Clinton, Iowa. I came out of nowhere, third round pick out of Northern Iowa. Had a breakout game at Philadelphia December 20th, had 187 rush yards, but only 99 total the last three games. He's breaking back loose here tonight. Well, if he can continue to run the football and pick up some of the gains that we've seen here on recent runs, that, that should settle down this offense a little bit, but more than that, finishing off this drive. Lined up wide to the right in the offensive formation. Here's the tight end, Fells. He leaps into Thomas Davis, who is banged up. And Fells is good for 15. Harper's still out. And let's go down to Chris Myers. Chris. Yeah, Joe, initially he wanted to go back in the game. There's a cut under his eye, and they've downgraded him now to questionable. They gave him an ice pack. There's some swelling there. They're concerned about the vision. So officially questionable. Harper doing all that he can. The general in that secondary to get back onto the field. Meanwhile, Darren Fells leaped into the waiting arms of Thomas Davis on that tackle. It's that right arm elbow that yeah. really took it all on from Darren Fells. Well, I don't know what kind of move that is by Darren Fells. I mean, normally if you do that, you're anticipating a defensive back going down low and that you're going to go over the top of him. But Thomas Davis, he's going to hit you right in the chest. Well, that does not look good at all. And a guy who is part of the best linebacker tandem in the NFL with Luke Keekley. Vital to the success of this defense. Here's a look from the front side. And he immediately came out of there grabbing that right arm. Well, obviously he's having an outstanding game and he's a Pro Bowl player. They'll bring in A.J. Klein will be the next linebacker in and they view him as a four starter. He's had playing time this year when Keekley was out and he's a good linebacker also. Carson Palmer's heating up seven for his last nine. Near side, pass caught, first down, the rookie Nelson. And he is set up first and goal, brought down by Robert McClain, and that's one of those matchups that Carson Palmer wants anybody on McClain as opposed to Norman on the other side. Yeah, well, he's going to be the guy that people target. You know, when you've got Josh Norman on one side, then McClain is the one that you focus on as you take a look at Carson Palmer's numbers and how, as you said, he's heated up since he started this ball game. One number. One number. If he can get some time and he can get into a rhythm like he Three is, back. he's right got ball. plenty right of guys right. to feed the ball to. Johnson. Cut left and cut it upfield right into the arms of Norman. Josh Norman's not afraid to tackle, and a guy who last week broke out of his coverage in his own defense to come flying in and pick up his first career sack, a freelance play when he brought down <laughs> yeah. Russell Wilson. Yeah, and we talked to him about that on Friday. He was sure pretty proud of himself for doing that. Glad that it worked. I don't know what Ron Rivera might have had to say to him if it hadn't. Tenth play of the drive. and again slams it into the end zone. And the Cardinals are on the scoreboard. They are riding the six foot one, 224 pound back who came on in the second half of the season. A 10 play, 79 yard drive. We get you potty, the left guard, he clears out of space to allow him to score, so. They get helped with the face mask penalty, adds 15 yards, but really a nice drive there by the Cardinals, finishing off with a touchdown. Davis has to go in to get looked at. We've seen two extra points missed this postseason. Kostkowski today earlier in Denver, and won by Washington in a wild card game against Green Bay. Cat and Zero makes it a 10-point game.
Cardinals making noise. David Johnson pounds it in. It's a 10 point game in Charlotte. Beautiful night here in Charlotte. Let's go down to the field and Chris Myers. Joe Thomas Davis walking unassisted past the locker room walk right into the x-ray room. Never moved his right arm. They're taking x-rays. We'll update those x-rays as soon as they become available. That is kind of a fluke thing as Fells went up in the air and the right leg of the big tight end banged into the right elbow and forearm of Thomas Davis. Such a vital part of this defense for Carolina. Zero will kick it away. And the drive for the Panthers up 10 will start at the 20. And we will welcome you inside the broadcast booth. I'm Joe Buck with the Hall of Famer Troy Aikman. And what are you seeing? Some life over there on the Arizona sideline. Yeah, it didn't look good for Arizona when they got down with that big deficit, but that was a nice drive on their part. And I think the, the impressive thing, if you're Bruce Arians, is that they were able to get David Johnson going and running the football and Carson. Big third down conversion that also kept that drive going, but great job of finishing off the drive and closing it to a 10-point game. Now we'll see if the Panthers can answer. Number six to go, first half. Newton keeps it. And out on the edge, Cam Newton spins forward. Peterson there to bring him down, but a gain of seven. They just live with the fact that he's going to get hit. Yeah, you, we, we saw all that read option a couple of years ago, RG3 and Colin Kaepernick. And guys like you were saying, yeah, but you're getting your quarterback blown up every time either hands it off or keeps it. They don't care. Newton's big enough to take it. Yeah, we've talked to Ron Rivera. We've talked to Mike Shula. Clearly, they would prefer for him not to get hit, but that's such a big part of this offense. And at 250 pounds, you know, he can withstand the punishment. Swings it to the sideline, and Bethel almost was there to take it away. Corey Brown was the target. Bethel looking for a bounce back weekend after the game against the Packers. Yeah, he's able to drive on that ball, and, and Cam Newton just throws it a little bit behind him, but a good job by, by Bethel. And like you said, I think all the coaches, Bruce Arians, James Betcher, all of them were kind of wondering how Bethel was going to come out and play in this game because of some of the plays that he gave up. And that went over the Packers last week. Brown starts in the backfield. Now is in motion. Third down and three. Newton throws out of the reach of Fozzie Whitaker. And the protection started to break down. Cam Newton had Whitaker, but overshot him with a little jump throw. Yeah, Bethel, we talk about the play that he made on the previous throw, and he almost gets caught here. He starts to drive on an underneath receiver and opened it up, and almost a big play for Carolina. That is back-to-back -back three and outs for the Carolina Panthers after they scored on their first three possessions. Hits it sideways and on the run. It is off the arms of Peterson and now the fight for the football. It was almost a shank. It belongs to Carolina. And Patrick Peterson on the dead run tried to make something happen and probably tried to do too much. Well, if he's able to catch that, he's driving on the ball. He's going to have a good chance for a return and a big play. And he just doesn't secure the catch. But he's, they finally made, they're able to make a stop, get the ball right back to an offense that's got a lot of momentum going for him and just unable to field that punt. And then, now they give the ball back to Carolina on a short field. Tenny Williams comes away from the bottom of that pile with a football. He was not one of the first guys to have a crack at it, but he comes in there. And it was caused by a short 34-yard punt. As they look at it upstairs, right now it's the second turnover for Arizona and Bruce Arians team is Carolina right now is plus four. And that turnover ratio 
They led the league at plus 20 during the regular season. There's Williams with the recovery. Yeah, you know, you come into a game like this, Joe, and as I said, both these teams, top two teams in creating takeaways. That's a special team's turnover there. But you look at it, you say, okay, a lot of times in a game, coaches always say whoever wins a turnover battle. This is really one of those games because of the way that these teams have played throughout the season and just, just such a change of momentum when they have a chance to get the ball with good field position. Long booth review here, Mike Pereira. Yeah, I mean, they were just looking to the fact of who recovered the ball because that is reviewable, but they were able to finally confirm that. Looked pretty obvious to me. Under five to go, first half, and now opportunity for Carolina. Double! Five one, double! Olsen split out wide to the right. Newton steps into it, looking for Ginn. Flag is thrown. The pass incomplete, but there was contact down the field. And it could very well be against Patrick Peterson. It looked like a double move there on the outside with Patrick Peterson. Yeah, he starts out and then stutters, and the grab by Peterson's a good call. A bad two minutes for Peterson. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number 21. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. So it's a hold, it's a five-yard penalty and a first down. And Peterson is trying to rally himself as much as he is trying to rally those around him after the special teams turnover and now the defensive hold. It looked like Ted Ginn on the end of that play that he was having a hard time locating the football. Otherwise, if he had been able to come back, he had a chance to you know, they get the five yard penalty and that's what you do as a defensive back if you feel that you're beat. Now Kotchery starts this play in the backfield. Here's Stewart. Jonathan Stewart inside the 25 to the 24 good for 17. Well, here's Marcus Gold, and we saw earlier when Cam Newton kept the ball, and this is what he's got to navigate. He's not certain whether or not Cam Newton's going to keep it or if he's going to hand it off to Jonathan Stewart. They hand it off, and Golden just not able to get enough. Another big run for Carolina. Stewart again. Inside the 10, down inside the 5. Offensive line, they're getting it going, and Greg Olson pulls across and he kicks out, and there's just a nice scene right in the heart of that defense. Jonathan Stewart takes it. 40 yards over the last two runs for Jonathan Stewart. And it sets up first and goal at the one. position for Arizona you obviously don't want to give up the touchdown it goes without saying but you also want to leave some time on the clock here two timeouts You're trying to get that offense back out on the field before the half second and goal and I just think I mean right things were looking good for Arizona and cut it to 10 to make a good stop and they're going to get the ball with good field position and now you got Carolina knocking on the door once again. Stewart brought down by Rucker. Tony Jefferson the safety up to make the hit as well and now it's third down and goal from just inside the one. Good play on these first two runs by Carolina the interior pressure the first down run Calais Campbell got there and Frosty Rucker this time finished off by Jefferson those are two good defensive stops after not being able to slow down the run that got Carolina down in this position Panthers number one in the NFL this year in points off turnovers knocking on the door here leading by 10 two-minute warning in Charlotte 
Official NFL and team apps, podcasts, games, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. Cam Newton, the elite quarterback, was 10 for 11. Running it on third down and one and picking up the first down. If he converts here, it's a touchdown and the kids are lined up. On the stairway waiting for a souvenir, third and goal. Here comes Cam. He got it. Touchdown. John Weatherspoon came out of there celebrating for Arizona, but the touchdown call came early. Touchdown, Panthers. Now we've seen them when they get down in that position, Joe. They were the fifth best in the league on third and one, and this time Cam Newton calls his own number, and it, it's a cross. It, from here, it didn't look like to me that it was that easy of a call, but from that angle, he definitely got it across the goal line, and big touchdown here for Carolina. Yeah, points off the turnover for the Panthers. They were the best in the league at that during the regular season, how they were helped to 15 and one, and Patrick Peterson turned it over. You know he's thinking about that. The extra point by Gano. Question left is which kid got the ball down behind the end zone. Flag. Flag is down on the extra point. The bigger question is how many kids in Charlotte don't have a ball? <laughs> Cam Newton said the kids get the first right of refusal. <laughs> and he will see them out of the corner of his eye lining up in that stairway. Looking for the football. He said when they get down in the red zone. Illegal formation. Defense. Seven men on half the line of scrimmage. The five yard penalty will be forced on the kickoff. Try is good. He said he sees them come all down to the fence there waiting to get their souvenir. Well, we'll see who got it. It started with Patrick Peterson, the muff punt, the turnover. Cam Newton took it up and over. And then his favorite handoff. He gets it 24-7. Cam Newton won a national championship at Auburn University, and he found a little kid in an Auburn hat. After taking it in from one yard away, up and over the top. It's seven points off the turnover, back to a 17-point game, and the need for an answer from Arizona prior to halftime. Yeah, especially considering that Carolina gets the ball to start the second half. Two timeouts left, a minute 56 on the clock. The drive will start at the 20. The Walter Payton Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide honors players who have significantly impacted both the game and their communities. This year's finalists announced earlier today are 49ers wide receiver Anquan Bolden, Saints tight end Benjamin Watson and Giants quarterback Eli Manning. They are all carrying on Walter Payton's legacy of dedication to the highest standards as both a player and a humanitarian. The winner will be announced at the NFL Honors Show on February 6th on CBS. Last year's winner Thomas Davis not out there for the Carolina defense as they continue to look at him. Back in the locker room. Palmer has it knocked out of his hand. And Fells can't get to it. Boston is there. Did he cover up? He did. Johnson knocked it out. And it's turnover number three for this Arizona team in the first half. Just unraveling for the Arizona Cardinals. Charles Johnson, he's working against right tackle Bobby Massey, and he gets Carson's arm. And he's coming back. We'll take a closer look, and ball clearly out as he's bringing it back to make the throw. Trey Boston on top of it. It doesn't happen by coincidence. Ron Rivera, who is in charge with these Carolina Panthers, 
as his defensive coordinator Sean McDermott put together tackling Wednesday every week where they go over form tackling they don't bring guys to the ground but they set up to tackle and turn over Thursday where they have situations and stations and they're the best in the NFL at this they've taken it away three times well, they're the best in the NFL giving the ball to their offense with short field and their offense is as good as there is in the league and converting those into seven points Third time, Carolina starts inside Arizona territory and nothing here. Jonathan Stewart into the arms of Frosty Rucker. Second down. Well, they're trying to get something going offensively, Arizona is, and match the score that Carolina just came away with after the, the punt by Patrick Peterson. And Bruce Arians is an offensive coach that just does not like to give those tackles much help and we've seen pressure off the edge throughout this first there half on Carson Palmer. Second and ten. This is Peterson. Did he need that? Patrick Peterson on the return. Down the sideline. Getting blocks. Trying to turn this first half around and he's down inside the 25. And there is life for the Arizona Cardinals. He giveth and now he taketh away. And Ginn is there to make the tackle. An interception thrown, a rare one from Cam Newton. Yeah, just an errant throw. They're trying to get the ball to Ed Dixon, the tight end, and he's open. I mean, you drive that ball right in the hole, and it's an easy completion, but uh, it gets away from Cam Newton. This is a great look at it here. And, You've got Patrick Peterson just waiting there playing deep thirds and makes the interception. Newton came in over the last nine games, 22 touchdown passes, one interception. The return 72 yards by Patrick Peterson. And now from the 22, can the Cardinals cash in? Showing blitz, Keekley comes on it. Palmer and Zone gives it back. Intercepted by Coleman. The Cardinals and Panthers trade interceptions. And that could be backbreaking for Carson Palmer. Yeah, I don't know what he was looking at, Joe. Kurt Coleman is hanging right in the hole. You're going to try to. Here's Coleman, you're gonna to try to run a post, and he's hanging back there, and that's the guy you're looking at as the quarterback, and you gotta wait and see what he does. If he levels off and you think you get over the top of him, you take that shot, but I don't think Coleman really showed anything other than he was going to be in a position to make the play on this, and at this point in the game, on first down, to try to force something like that in that area of the field, just not smart. John Brown was the target. Kirk Coleman, what a year he had. Seven interceptions to tie for third in the NFL during the regular season. And he adds a big one here. So Peterson gets one for Arizona, and Kirk Coleman turns around and on the very next play gets one for Carolina. Piece of halftime coming up. Kurt Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. They're not under there. They will step in once that thing pops up. Guys getting set to go, 25 seconds left in the half. And it will be a 17-point game, but these big leads for the Carolina Panthers at halftime have been anything but gimmies in the second half. That was true last week. It was true earlier in the year against Indianapolis. It was true in the Meadowlands against the Giants. But so far, so good for the number one seeded Carolina Panthers. Number two seeded Arizona Cardinals. It has been a rough first half. 17 point lead. Piece of halftime coming up from Charlotte after this. Tonight's excitement brought to you by Nissan. Tonight's excitement brought to you by Nissan. 
Carolina Panthers who lead this game by 17 will get the ball to start this second half. You look at the first half statistics. Total yards it's not crazy. That second from the bottom line turnovers four to one. Cardinals have turned it over four times or minus three in that turnover ratio. It's hard enough to win on the road in a championship game. Doing that makes it almost impossible. Fonzie Whitaker on the return from just inside the end zone. Can't make the 20. What'd you learn, Aaron Andrews? Well, that Bruce Arians told his quarterback, Carson Palmer, to settle down. He said that throw that was picked by Kurt Coleman, you can't make throws like that. And he said these third downs are just simply unmanageable. He did tell his team, Joe, this Carolina Panthers team, they're the worst second half team in the NFL. And he told me if they can do anything in these first five and a half minutes, then Arizona's going to win the game. Well, we'll see how it plays out. 17 points right now. Carson Palmer, he knows that 13th year, finally won a playoff game, wants to be a world champion, and he's got the best team that he's had around him in his career, and he's going to have to play his best football here in the second half. Four-man rush pass. He is caught for a first down by Kachery. And a good throw there by Cam Newton. A great way to start off this second half. Just drop back and let Cam Newton sling it. And he gets it to the veteran, Jericho Cotchery, who has been a real reliable guy this year for Cam Newton. Cam keeps it. Left side. A gain of four, and we go down to Chris Myers. Well, Ron Rivera said he'll stay aggressive, especially after last week, and you saw that in that series a moment ago. A couple of injury updates. The veterans Thomas Davis out with an arm injury, Roman Harper out with an eye injury, and the knee injury to Ryan Khalil. He is back in, suffered in the second quarter. Ron Rivera said he didn't have to say a word to his team at halftime, Joe. He said Cam Newton got up and spoke and told the team how important this was, what it meant, and let's finish it. Chris, thanks. Second and six. Toss to Stewart running right. Knocked down by Stinson. You know, we talked to the players on Friday, Joe, coming off of the win from last week. It had the big lead, 31-0 against Seattle. And, you know, it does take a little bit of the wind out of your sails when it all of a sudden becomes a game and it finished up as a seven-point game. But I thought Mike Shula really kind of called the game the way you needed to based on how dangerous Seattle is, but they open up this possession, they throw in the football, and obviously a much different game here at 24-7. See if this is a first down by penalty. It's third down and two. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 93. Five yard penalty results in a first down. As you watch, Frosty Rucker coming across. Carolina is leading by 17. They've led by 17 or more at the half. Six straight home games. That's the longest streak since the 1973 Dolphins. That's how dominant the Carolina Panthers have been at home where they've gone 9-0 this season. Second half point differential. That's why some of those games have ended up close. And outscored in the second half. How's this one going to go? Here's Olsen. Inside the 30. Working on Tony Jefferson. Good for 29. This is Greg Olsen. He's been doing it for the last four or five years here in Carolina. And he gets up the seam. He completely turns around Tony Jefferson. We saw Corey Brown do it earlier in the first half against Rashad Johnson. And this time, Greg Olsen. Does it to Tony Jefferson, and with time in the pocket, again, nobody around Cam Newton. He delivers a strike. Number 88 this postseason has eight catches for eight first downs. He makes some count play action from Newton. Pass is underneath the ground, and he gets popped by Jerron Powers. Let's go back and look at the protection for Cam Newton. 
This offensive line is, as, as I said earlier, they've been the heartbeat of this team, and they've been a good group. I know Bruce Arians talked about it and said, hey, it's probably the best offensive line we've seen all year. And just an excellent throw by Cam Newton to Greg Olson. What we got? Second down and three, Stewart right side. Lost a yard. Minter was there for Arizona. I like this drive, though, to start the second half. And I do think that Mike Shula has, has made a statement and has made these players aware, hey, we're not letting up. We're going to continue to throw the ball and be aggressive, and that's what they've done. They've mixed it up, and you know, even now, depending on what happens here on third down, in a position to come away with some points. It was Mike Shula. Not the three. legendary coach, Don Shula. Brother with David Shula. <laughs> on a roll here with Carolina. Here's Tolbert. Out of the backfield, first down and more. Inside the 10, first and goal. Fourteen yards to Mike Tolbert brought down by Jefferson. And Mike Tolbert, he just takes off on an arrow route right to the flat. And Deon Buchanan looked like he was the one who's trying to get out there to cover him, but he has to navigate a lot of bodies there before he can. And it's a well-designed play. Sixth different receiver Cam Newton has found in this game. And Mike Colbert, he's going to the Pro Bowl as well. He's just such a versatile guy. And the kids, they're lining up. Tolbert, rather Stewart. As Tolbert got him in position. Stewart takes it near the five. Second down and goal as Stewart picked up four. Ron Rivera. His father, military officer, he didn't like getting hit. So somebody on their way, it was Tolbert coming off the sideline, banged into the left arm of Ron Rivera, who was a really good linebacker in his day with Chicago. Well, that's just proof that even linebackers, when you get old, you get a little soft. Oh. <laughs> Second and goal. <laughs> Newton backs out of there, looking to throw it. Down he goes. Stinson there to tap him down. Stewart lost his footing, spinning around. It'll be third and goal. Well, Ed Stinson, he's able to get the pressure up inside. Looked like maybe that Cam Newton was, he got a little uh, tricky here in the pocket. If he takes off right there, he's got some room out in front of him that he, he may even score. Someone's got to come up and tackle the big guy, but he just loses his footing trying to escape Stinson. They have protected Cam Newton very well. He's given up one sack. He's been hit only three times. Third and goal. <laughs> Newton swings it. That's Olsen, but he's short of the end zone. And if nothing else, the Cardinals' defense keeps Carolina out of the end zone. And the field goal unit will come on for the Panthers. But a good drive, you know, the way that they were able to put some plays to get together to get down there. And Cam Newton on that throw, really good work with his eyes, moving defenders to give Olsen an opportunity. Yeah, but even on the sack, which went to Stinson, he didn't force anything. And Cam Newton has not thrown a pick going down in the red zone coming into this game all year long. This from 21. The lead is 20. More points on the board for the Panthers. Trying to earn their trip to Super Bowl 50. Leading at home by 20 points. They got a guy in this stadium who knows about championships. The owner of the Charlotte Hornets. Hall of Famer and we had a chance to visit with him last week. He's really developed a nice relationship with Cam Newton and Cam really looks up to him. Cam talked about his rivalry with Seattle like Jordan early on in his career against the Pistons back in the day. And down by 20 points, the drive will start at 20. For Arizona and Carson Palmer hoping this will be a better half.
Thomas Davis has the jacket on. Pads are still on, but he is out. With that right arm wrapped up, who knows the extent of the injury? Carson Palmer, the best passer rating in the second half this season. He'll need all of it. His defense needs to find some answers as well. Here's Johnson. David Johnson right side brought down by Shaq Thompson a gain of two. Not a good first half for Carson Palmer. No, he missed some easy throws under a lot of pressure there in the pocket. And the longest completion that they had in that first half, just 16 yards. They took two shots deep, had opportunities on both, failed to hit them. But for an offense and a quarterback that came out expecting to be able to exploit, you know, some of the lack of depth in the secondary for the Carolina Panthers, they've been unable to do any of that. Carson Palmer turned it over three times in the first half. Short throw. David Johnson trying to spin out of bounds, stays in. Josh Norman was out there on the stop. Trey Boston ended up with a football. It stays with the Cardinals. Manageable third down coming up, third and two. And we showed Roman Harper, who's out of the game, and that Trey Boston is playing for him. Just a second-year guy, but a really talented guy. And you lose the experience of Roman Harper, but Trey Boston has better range, and at this stage of his career, a more athletic guy. Raven, Raven. Each possession so critical. Down by 20 and a drop from Larry Fitzgerald. Would have converted for the first down, but Fitzgerald dropped it. And he has an opportunity slipped through his hands. It looked like it, I wonder why he jumped it. It looked like it might have gotten tipped. It's Keekly off the edge who David Johnson is blocking, yep. but yep, it was Star Latulale that was able to get his hand on the ball just enough that didn't allow Fitzgerald to come down the catch. Butler hits it. And a juggle and a catch by Ted Ginn. That ball was tipped. The jump was a little bit off. And the drop from Larry Fitzgerald as the frustration continues for the Cardinals. The defense on the sideline for the Panthers. Larry Fitzgerald had six receiving yards in the first half last week, 10 here tonight in the first half. And that tip ball was into and out of his hands on third down, so the Panthers have it, leading by 20. From the 21, and Stewart Buchanan in there on the tackle. A big day coming in February on Fox. Michael and Jeff. Michael, Daytona Day is coming. It's going to be my first one in the booth. You got any plans? Yes, I do, my man. I'm going to get together with a bunch of friends. We're going to do our Daytona Day chili cook-off at my place, and I'm going to watch you call the race. Awesome. Cannot wait. Just four weeks till Daytona Day. Four weeks away, and welcome to Fox Sports. To Jeff Gordon, who's been with us during the course of the weekend. Here's Newton. To the sideline, and caught by Ginn. Right through the hands of Powers. And Ginn is waiting for it for a completion of 39. Again, he's running the wheel route and the ball's out and Powers just unable to get up high enough to make a play on that ball, just perfectly thrown over the top of him into the hands of Ginn. Initially, it looked like on the other side is where Newton was wanting to go with the ball. Bethel thought he might have gotten away with a hole, but he works back the opposite side of the field and finds Ginn along the sideline. Wide receivers really involved this week for the Panthers and Cam Newton in the pass game. Takes the pitch and then goes down inside the 40. The Carolina Panthers lost Kelvin Benjamin. Their stud rookie from a year ago during camp, their first round pick out of Florida State. And so the wide receivers, while they haven't caught a ton of passes, when they've made catches, they have made them count. Averaging over 14 and a half yards per catch. That was good for second in the NFL. There's Kelvin Benjamin. Cam Newton knew that his teammates' eyes were on him when Benjamin went down to see how he would react. He plowed ahead. And here he is. Good clock! 16 and 1 on the year. 
play clock winding down. Carolina takes a timeout before a second down. Watch Super Bowl 50 live on your phone with NFL Mobile. Panthers had to take a timeout. Yeah, a lot of discussion going on in that offensive huddle with Cam Newton talking to Devin Funches and Corey Brown. And as much conversation that took place, I would expect to see something here shot down the field. Quick snap. Here's Funches. Open along the sideline and knocked out of bounds with a first down for Carolina by Peterson. Well, a good route by Devin Funches, who's really had a nice rookie season for this offense, and he's been relied on at times this year because of some injuries, and he just continues to get better and better. He's a big target at 6'4", played a little tight end, actually, in college, but they view him completely as a wide receiver here in Carolina in a nicely run route on that play. The wide receivers in the mark they're making, eight catches, 192, compared to last week against Seattle. High snap. Newton finds Olsen. And Olsen is knocked down by Minter. No game. This is just another good drive by Carolina. They're mixing it up. I like what Mike Shula's done, and then Cam's delivered some nice throws, but... Again, they're down here in field goal range, and just as importantly, they continue to take time off this clock. Previous drive that ended up in the field goal lasted over seven minutes. And this is another good one. Second and ten. Jefferson is coming away from the play, hoping he didn't get a flag and maybe begging for offensive pass interference. Now this is almost a great catch by Dixon off the back shoulder. And take a look. There's definitely some sparring going on between those two. I like the non-call. We heard from Mike Pereira earlier in this game. Throughout the playoffs, we've seen the officials let these guys go. Lock yeah. stop with 249 left. Third quarter. Third down and 10. It's Newton being chased down from behind. Powers doesn't get there, and we'll see where they mark it. Looks like enough for a first down. As he went right through Chris Clemens and picked up. Yeah, it's yet another. It's almost not even fair, Joe. You saw what I saw. Gerard Powers is barreling down on Cam Newton. Anybody else, he catches him, and Cam Newton at 250 pounds just outruns him for the first down. Does any quarterback in the NFL have a better nose for a first down or a touchdown than Cam Newton? <laughs> He is in for the touchdown. Ken gets to give it away. The likely MVP has been celebrating since this game began. You see these two, Trey Turner and Ryan Khalil, they pull out. This is a quarterback keeper the entire way, and he finishes this off with his Superman impersonation. He didn't have to go over the top, but he decides to, and the guy's absolutely fearless when it comes to running the football and doing whatever he has to do to put his team in a position to win a game. There is nobody like him today. He can do it with his arm. He can do it with his legs. Cam Newton responsible for 49 touchdowns this season for the Panthers. I'm 27. It is a party down below aerial coverage provided by Nationwide. I think you can get misled 
by the pregame costume changes and the dances and the celebrating and all that and lose what Cam Newton is as a quarterback and as a leader. He is the undisputed leader of this team. Ron Rivera lets him be him. Not scared of getting him hit. If he told us that he wants to go out, letting people know that he had fun playing this game. Well, he's doing it in front of a national audience here tonight. Cam Newton, uh, what a season. I mean, what a season for a guy that was responsible for 45 touchdowns during the regular season. Well, the guys won at every level, right? And there was a lot of questions as to whether or not Cam could handle this stage. And we all know what he did in college. We all know he likes this stage. And I don't know about you, Joe, but I know for me, I, I didn't expect anything different. I thought he would come out and play well. And he certainly has done that, but it hasn't just been Cam Newton. It's been a collective effort. The defense has been outstanding. They've gotten some help from the special teams. And Arizona, I expected a lot more out of them, especially this offensive unit. Now Carson Palmer is a sitting duck back there as he gets it out of his hand quickly to David Johnson. Knocked out by McLean. Coleman was out there as well, a gain of seven. Johnson's looking for a hit out of bounds. Second down and three. The last five possessions for Arizona. At one point, they had closed it down to a 10-point game. They've gone fumble, then touchdown fumble interception punt all those big plays that we talked about coming into this game it's time for them to start hitting one at least they haven't even gotten one big completion in this game second and three quick set up and throw and this is off and larry fitzgerald mclean was out there in coverage these are two guys in the secondary and mclean was in coverage on fitzgerald who Drops another one, but Cortland Finnegan and Robert McClain, two guys, they were added late in the season, Finnegan in November and McClain in mid-December, and they're holding up. They're holding up against the second-best pass offense in football. Their secondary loses their two of their three best corners the last month of the year. They bring these guys in. Cortland Finnegan, he, wasn't, he didn't have a job. Pass caught. Fitzgerald, that's his third catch, and it's a first down for Arizona. They certainly benefit by this pass rush and the speed of the linebackers, but they've held up well. Sean McDermott is the defensive coordinator for Ron Rivera in Carolina. These guys love playing for McDermott. Here's a good throw for a first down on a catch by J.J. Nelson. Good for 11. There's a look at Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator. He interviewed for a couple of jobs during the bye week. I really thought he was going to get an opportunity, but he has done an excellent job of this defense. Said Nelson, that pass caught by Brown. Here's one over the middle, and this is Jerron Brown. His first catch of the game. And now in this hurry-up approach, the Cardinals are making some noise with 30 seconds left in the third quarter. to Johnson, nothing out there. Keatley and Addison were there to make the stop. And we'll see if that's the last play of the third quarter. Three quarters dominated by the home team, the Carolina Panthers. Two seconds, one second, they just get it away. Palmer underneath to Johnson. Johnson to the 30, maybe just inside. It'll be third and short when we start the fourth quarter. Cam Newton showing all he can do all night long back after this from your local Fox station. 27 point game as the fourth quarter begins here in Charlotte. We will meet the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 50. Right here, let's go, baby. led from the get-go. Third down and two. Pass is dropped again. This time fells the tight end. And we'll see what Bruce Arians wants to do. 
Down by 27 points. You need touchdowns. The offense will stay out there instead of kicking the field goal. It's fourth and two. Yeah, not much of a decision to make. The, the thing that I've really been surprised about, Joe, is they've really been unable to get Larry Fitzgerald going. I mean, that's a guy who has thrived in the postseason, coming off a huge game, thin in the secondary. They move him around, and yet they've just not been able to find ways to get the ball into his hands. Bass is caught for a first down by Johnson. And it's not Josh Norman. When you think about Josh Norman and the great Larry Fitzgerald, the young corner, the all pro. Norman doesn't go into the slot. Larry Fitzgerald runs a lot of his stuff out of the slot. So it's been other guys as Norman has seen a lot of Michael Floyd, who's been shut down in this game, by the way. Yeah, and that tends to be what happens. You know, <laughs> Josh Norman's lining up in your area. And They've mixed it up a little bit. Cortland Finnegan has been over there on Fitzgerald. We've seen Shaq Thompson. This time, nobody's lined up on him. Pass is caught by Fells for the touchdown. With 44 seconds expired in quarter number four, the Cardinals get their second touchdown. Well, Darren Fells, 21 receptions on the season, and these are some of the things that he does a pretty good job of. He's a big body, and sometimes he just gets forgotten. He gets a free release up the seam, and Carson finds him, and they're able to finish off this drive, and Bruce Arians going for two points here. Trying to pile up as many points as he can. This will be the first two-point attempt by the Cardinals all season long. Palmer from the shotgun. Nelson on the handoff. He leaps and he's got it. Had to break a tackle to get it in. And J.J. Nelson, who can fly, is good for the two-point conversion. Went through McLean and took it in. Eight points put up on that possession. 34-15 game in the fourth. It is a three-score game here in the NFC Championship as we're just underway in the fourth quarter. As Darren Fells takes it in from 21 yards out. The two-point conversion good. It's a 19-point game. Patrick Peterson and that defense wondering if they can make a play to slow down Cam Newton so far. That has not happened often. And Zero will drive it. Back in the end zone. The night before Super Bowl 50, the NFL salutes the best players and plays of the season with a primetime star-studded football and entertainment special. NFL honors hosted by Conan O'Brien, Saturday, February 6th at 9 o'clock on CBS. Well, I'm one of the fortunate ones who has a vote on some of those awards in the All-Pro team, and Cam Newton got a vote for league MVP. He was sensational, and... Tom Brady, who lost, I thought he probably did more with less with the amount of injuries that the New England Patriots had. He was my offensive player of the year, but just some really spectacular performances that are going to be recognized from the night before the Super Bowl. We'll see how the Panthers want to play. They hand it off to Stewart, and Red Bryant is in there to make the stop. We talk about head coach Ron Rivera. Steve Horn, our editorial consultant, talked to Johnny Rowland who was with the Bears back in the mid-80s when Ron Rivera showed up. And that defense, it was run by Buddy Ryan, was an intricate system. Great linebackers anchored by Mike Singletary in the middle. Here's Newton with a drop on the outside by Corey Brown. It's third down and 10, and even though he backed up, he could play all three spots. You're talking about guys like Otis Wilson, Wilbur Marshall, and obviously Singletary. And this guy is a studier, a worker, and he has really blossomed as a head coach in the NFL. Yes, he has. He was around a lot of great players, of course, but what's helped him in his coaching is he's been a lot around a lot of great coaches. I mean, when you consider Randy. Buddy Ryan as defensive coordinator, and then Jim Johnson and the time that he spent with Philadelphia and He's got Sean McDermott now as his defensive coordinator running some of those same schemes. 
Newton underneath. Olsen, good tackle. Play made by Bethel, it's fourth down. And a good tackle by Justin Bethel, six footer, 200 pounds. And a 6'5, 253 pound Greg Olsen. You know what Patrick Peterson's thinking back there? He wants to give his team a jolt here early in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he's certainly capable of doing it. He's a dynamic guy, and if he gets this ball and he can return it, that's what this Arizona team right now needs is a big play to flip this field position. Nordman hangs it high, and consequently a fair catch. A decent starting field position for the Cardinals. Now 19, their offense right back to the field. Let's see if they can dig into this lead. 79-year-old owner and founder Jerry Richardson. Former player in this league, and when as he makes somebody happy with an autograph, the Carolina Panthers entered the league in 1995. He became the first former player to be an owner in the league since George Hallis, and these two teams are playing for the George Hallis Trophy here tonight. Here's Johnson, makes the catch off his hip. Like he had his head turned around before he secured the catch. This kid's going to be something, gain of five. And he's an awfully talented guy, he can do so much. And what they questioned was whether or not he would be a good inside runner. That was a knock on him, and it's really why he fell a little in the draft. But he certainly has proven his ability to do that when he took over for the injured Chris Johnson. Second down and five, Palmer, sideline, Floyd. Floyd gets on the board. He's been working against Josh Norman. Norman's had the better of that matchup, but this one good for a first down. And a nice route by Michael Floyd and, and able to come back out of that. Carson Palmer throws it on time, and it's a first down, and that's one of the areas I know in visiting with the staff where Michael Floyd has really improved this year. He's got immense talent, but has become a much better route runner. Got off to a slow start, came on strong midseason, but they need some bigger chunks right now. Still plenty of time. First catch for Floyd. <laughs> Palmer throws it into coverage and it's broken up. And Norman had it for a moment. Floyd knocked it away. And this one again was up for grabs out of the hand of Carson Palmer. Yeah, I know. And coming into this game, they thought that there were times when Josh Norman may miss time some jumps and you might be able to get one over the top on with Floyd. But that's that's not what I would call putting one over the top. Carson kind of works right into that. Collision with Kwan Short, but that was a dangerous throw. Cardinals trying to make it a game. Second and ten. Palmer protected. Fitzgerald overthrown, and it's dropped. Robert McLean was thinking about a postseason interception. Didn't make the catch. Well, ball gets away from Carson, but he has some pressure. He gets grabbed a little bit in the pocket which turns him, and I don't know how much that affected the throw, or if it's just a poor throw. You see Carson saying he got grabbed by the face mask. I didn't quite see that, but McLean misses a great opportunity for the interception. Now third down and 10. You figure two downs to get 10 yards to keep the drive alive. This is incomplete, and a flag is thrown as Fitzgerald ended up on the ground. It's that matchup there in the slot. Cortland Finnegan, he's man-to-man -man on Fitzgerald Far as he tries pass. to come out of it. He grabs him. Holding. Defense number 20. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. They say 20. That's Coleman. It looked like it was against Finnegan, 26 for the first down. Yeah, and Fitzgerald, as I said, he's just got three catches in the game. They finally work in his direction, and a good call there. Clearly a hold on Finnegan. This drive started at the Arizona 36. Second best starting field position for the Cardinals, down 19. First down at the 44 of Carolina. Three men on the rush, pump fake, toward the end zone, up for grabs and picked off by Coleman.
his second of the game. And a flag is thrown at the end. Josh Norman celebrates. He thinks it's against Arizona. We'll make sure and get the call from Vinovich. Brown was the target. You can see Kurt Coleman, he's in the middle. and After the interception, personal foul, face mask. Number 20, 15 yards from the 20-yard line, Carolina Bow versus 10 at the 35. It's against Coming John out. Brown. Second pick by Coleman. And there's the face mask on John Brown. Five turnovers in this game for Arizona, down 19. Here's the call. After reviewing the play, the defender possessed the ball at the one-yard line and his momentum carried him into the end zone. Therefore, he's dead at the one-yard line. The 15-yard penalty will be eight out of there. It'll be first and 10 from the 16. So the 15-yard penalty on the face mask by Brown takes it out to the 16. It turns into a pretty big penalty. Instead of Carolina taking over at the one, they have some breathing room. Well, Kirk Coleman was a ball hawk all season long, second in the NFL with seven interceptions. He's playing middle field. You wonder if the finger has been bothering Carson Palmer, not just in this game, but ever since it happened five weeks ago, because he's, his throws have just gotten away from him. Put close on that one. Carson Palmer suffered that dislocated index finger in that win at Philadelphia on the 20th of December. Carson in this game has thrown two interceptions. That means that since that time, he's now thrown seven touchdown passes and six interceptions. It was bothering his pec, his lat, because he had to change the way he was throwing the ball. We saw it last night, and it is not a pretty yeah, yeah. sight looking at that index finger. Well, if you're changing the way you're throwing yeah, the ball, yeah. clearly the finger is impacting you, and that is making you make adjustments to the way you throw. Here's Stewart on second and four. Back to the line of scrimmage. Speaking of fingers, watch Mario Addison come in on that interception, see if he maybe got a piece of this. Well, Mario Addison, he was camping in the background. I think he did get a hand on the ball. He was camping on the in the backfield that whole series. Kirk Coleman is in the middle of the field, and the ball is thrown upfield. You see where Brown has to try to traverse field to make a play. You got to take a shot at this point in the game because you got to come up with some big plays. But that ball gets away from Palmer where he throws it actually behind Brown and doesn't lead him to give him a chance. It's out front. He probably outruns Kirk Coleman to the ball. Here's a third down and four. Newton. Olsen, his favorite target, Greg Olsen, inside the 30 and down near the 25. Some of these routes have just been a coach's clinic on how you get defensive backs turned around. This time, Justin Bethel, 28, and Greg Olsen, his second big time route in this game in turning around a defender and giving Cam Newton just a great place to put the football. He was number two in the NFL as far as receiving yards by tight end to Rob Gronkowski of New England. Averaged over 14 yards a catch. Handed off to Tolbert. Fights for a yard. I don't think. Uh, Ron Rivera is going to be answering any questions at the end of this game about taking his foot off the gas. I mean, they have continued to throw the football and mix things up, and it's been impressive to watch this offense and all the things that they've done. And he's watched his team take it away five times. The five turnovers, the most by the Cardinals under Bruce Arians. Yeah, and although Arizona really hasn't done, I mean, excuse me, Carolina really hasn't done much with those turnovers, just seven points. Before this drive here, it obviously just minimizes your opportunities then as an offense to get points, and they've needed every possession the way this score has gone. How about that play? Here's Tolbert on the handoff. On second down and nine, third down coming up. The moment you've been waiting for finally here. Tonight, the Emmy Award-winning pop culture phenomenon returns. David Duchovny and Jillian Anderson 
star in the X-Files. The truth is still out there tonight after the game here on Fox. It's back. Music is back. The Panthers are back inside the red zone. Third and five. Third and ten. Ball start. Offense number 73. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's Michael Orr who they moved back to left tackle. Guy who's got a ring with Baltimore, then was in Tennessee, and he was targeted by Dave Gettleman in this front office over the offseason to have him anchor that blind side for Cam Newton. Yeah, Dave Gettleman, he, he's done a nice job since he came in. That first draft class that he had when he brings in K1 Short, Starla Tulele, and you know, Marty Herney, the previous general manager, he has a lot to do with the assembling of this roster also. Third down and 10. Newton steps through it. He will slide forward for a first down. Now blocking's good across the board. Andrew Norwell, the left guard, he sizes his guy up. And you got Ryan Khalil, who's out in front like a leading blocker. And Andrew Norwell, I thought last week, was just exceptional the way that he played and makes a good block there to spring Cam Newton. Put it down. First and goal. <laughs> Stewart stumbling takes it down to the six. I mentioned Marty Herney was the GM for the Panthers 2002 to 2012. He hired Ron Rivera. He drafted Davis, Keekley, Jonathan Stewart, Cam Newton, Josh Norman, Ryan Khalil, the five-time Pro Bowl center. Now it's Dave Gettleman who's done a good job picking it up for the Panthers. Talk about the draft he had. Personnel is deep for the Panthers, second and goal. Deep and good. Here's Stewart, who was on that list to the five. Third and goal. Don't you know that Denver Broncos staff is at home watching this game right now, wondering how they're going to slow down this offense of the Carolina Panthers? Well, it's going to be some matchup if that is the matchup. Top defense in the NFL, the Denver Broncos. This is the offensive line that's done such a good job here tonight across the board. It's a pretty good feeling, I can tell you. When, as a quarterback, you know that you're going to get your rushing yards every game. I mean, Cam's a big part of that. But they run the football well against everybody they face. And what? It's impressive. They do an excellent job in the big passes off of that, the play action stuff. They drive the ball down the field, and it has continued tonight. Newton keeps it. End zone passes. Caught for the touchdown. Bunches. They keep pouring the coals on the fire. They put up 40. <laughs> Heck, they get a free blitzer on Cam Newton, and he cuts it loose. Perfect timing. And delivers a strike to Funches. Newton today, five. On the touchdown throw to Funches. He's thrown for two, run for two. 50 touchdowns on the record for Cam Newton in this 2015-2016 season. I mean, he's been spectacular all season, but he has been good at the biggest stage of his career here tonight. Like I said, a free rusher, and he hangs in there getting hit while he's delivering it and throws a perfect ball. Here's a two-point try by Carolina. They haven't attempted a two-point try all year long. Tolbert back there with Newton. We'll see who it's against. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 51. Half the distance of the goal. Still track. I'm going to move it to the one. 
they're changing their personnel group because of it. They bring in the extra lineman. Darrell Williams in, so they're changing the play, bringing in different personnel, and you'd expect run. Here with one yard to go. It was just Tolbert now. Stewart checks in. Deuce, deuce. And he's behind deuce. Tolbert. See if they try to run it right down their throat. Newton keeps it. Tolbert on the backfield for two. It's been a clinic. It's been all Carolina. Pointing their way toward Santa Clara. Super Bowl 50. This from the Carolina sideline, special teams coach Bruce DeHavens in his mid-60s. Last spring, told he had cancer, seemingly healthy before that, limit on his time to live, according to doctors. Four decades of coaching, he said, I'll fight, but I'll also coach. Owner Jerry Richardson said, you have our support, whatever you need. Through this, when he needed his treatments, he stepped aside. Players said he never complained, said a word. When I talked to him before the game, he said, I'm not the story. But his players, Joe Webb, Graham Gano, and not just special teams, said otherwise. He's been an inspiration to his entire team. DeHaven has been to the Super Bowl as an assistant with Buffalo, this time hoping for a feel-good story, maybe a win for Carolina, and a win for Bruce DeHaven. Yeah, he was uh, part of the great Marv Levy's staff, the special teams coordinator. One of the real good guys of this game. Good guys of professional sports. Here's Nelson on the return out across the 25. Flag is down on that return by Nelson. During the return, holding, receiving team number 29. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Arizona keeps the ball. First down. Let's go to the penalty. Against the Cardinals for the hold, Chris Clemens. Had a hold of David Mayo. So the drive will start inside the 15 at the 12 for Carson Palmer, who got that first playoff win last week. Traded to Arizona from Oakland in 2013, a record-setting year. He's picked again. Keekley for the touchdown. And then aware enough to check on a fan who flopped down on the field. After the score, there's Charles Tillman on IR with a torn knee. And the celebration continues. Keekley, who runs this defense. It's his third interception return for a touchdown this season. He's a playmaker on the defensive side of the ball. He's been great as a run stopper ever since he arrived in Carolina, where he has improved the most this year is in his ability to cover. He reads it, he drives on it, makes a play on the ball, touchdown Carolina. He had one last week against Seattle in the first quarter. That a 21-yard return, and that is six turnovers by Arizona compared to one by Carolina. It has continued in the postseason. They work on it on Thursdays. And it's 49 to 15. The pick, Keekley, in his fourth year, takes it in. A flag on the extra point will get the call before we go to break. They lost Thomas Davis in the first half, an arm injury. We don't know the extent of it. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Kicking team number 79, 15-yard penalty on the kickoff. And with that, we'll go to break. Quick one, come right back here to Carolina. The celebration is on in Charlotte. This boot 
truth is literally bouncing. And this defense celebrating the offense. Cam Newton, 382 rushing and passing yards in the game. Four touchdowns in this NFC Championship game. It's a record. Most in the Super Bowl era, 49 points put up. Now the number one seed, a team that has lost only once this year. That was in Atlanta. And that was in week 16. On the return, it's Nelson. Fozzie Whitaker downfield. To make the play. The 2003 Panthers, a team that beat Philadelphia to get to the Super Bowl. It was a really good Super Bowl. A three-point game. In the end, it was Vinatieri with a game-winning field goal and some of the names. And a team that offensively was led by Jake DeLome and was coached by John Fox. Let's go! Denver Broncos, a team the Panthers will meet, a team also Coached at one point by John Fox. Fitzgerald makes the catch. Meanwhile, Peyton Manning will become the oldest quarterback, Troy, to start a Super Bowl, beating the record by his boss, Matt Kubiak, but John Elway, who was 38, at the back end of the back to back Super Bowl championships at the end of his career. You know, wouldn't that be something? Cap his career for practices at home. This one is picked again. Intercepted by Boston. Instead of having him work back towards him, Floyd's the one who he's trying to get it to. And, you know, like we said, this defense has been opportunistic all season long. It led the league in interceptions. It's been quite a show here tonight. And if you're Carson Palmer and the Arizona Cardinals, you just wonder how you ever bounce back from a game like this, especially for a guy who's in his 13th year. And so much was made of this season and what was around him in the buildup of this team to get to this position and not play any better than they have. Derek Anderson takes over at quarterback. Here's Stewart, they're still running him. Jonathan Stewart, who missed three games with a sprained foot, carries it for eight. Mentioned Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers. He's only 41. He interviewed for two head coaching jobs, Cleveland and Tampa Bay. There's Sean who studied at the foot of the blitz master Jim Johnson in Philadelphia as you mentioned. He's 41 the quarterback he'll be trying to slow down the great five time MVP Peyton Manning in Super Bowl 50 in Santa Clara. So he knew the first player in postseason history with 300 or more pass yards and two rushing touchdowns Stewart first down stays in bounds. You know, when we visited with Ron Rivera on Friday and what a job he has done this year, he talked about his growth as a head coach, and he said one of the things that he wishes that he had done a little differently was have a former head coach on his staff when he took the job because he really had a lot to learn. But the guy who's taught him the most really has been John Madden, and we've talked about it on previous broadcasts, and he talked about the notes and the visits that he's, the notes he took on these visits with John Madden, and, Friday after our meeting, he wanted me to see these notes, and he copied them off, handed them to me, about 10 pages of typewritten notes, and it is an encyclopedia on coaching and a philosophy on how to run a football team. Pretty impressive stuff. He gets text messages from John Madden. I'm sure John is beaming with what Ron Rivera has accomplished here. We're about to go to 17 and one. And the biggest piece of advice John gave him was do it your way. 
quit trying to be the quote unquote head coach and do what you think is supposed to be done. Do it your way. You're going to get fired eventually. You might as well walk away knowing you did it the way Ron Rivera wanted to do it. And I think once he heard that, Joe, which was a few years ago, I think that was the genesis of Riverboat Ron. You know, and he started doing things the way he wanted to, whether it was by the textbook or not. Here's Fozzie Whitaker who takes over for Stewart on second and 12, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. It'll be a long offseason after this. Bad taste in the mouths of the Arizona Cardinals at the end of a great record-setting season. But it's all Carolina tonight. Two minutes left in this NFC Championship game. Posing on the sidelines are the Carolina Panthers. On their way to their second Super Bowl in franchise history. History that dates back to 1995. And Neil Diamond, I love it. Serenading the sweet Caroline. As Cam Newton will go to Super Bowl 50, trying to become the third quarterback ever to win a college national title and a Super Bowl. Enjoying a list. It's got Joe Namath on it and Joe Montana on it. The 2016 NFL Pro Bowl is coming up. Hall of Famers Michael Irvin and Jerry Rice select the teams of the Pro Bowl draft on Wednesday, January 27th. And watch the Pro Bowl live from Aloha Stadium on Sunday, January 31st on ESPN at 7 Eastern. Go to NFL.com slash Pro Bowl to learn more. Pretty interesting matchup. As we look at Super Bowl 50 with these quarterbacks, you got old school versus new age, and it's going to be hopefully a heck of a ball game, but certainly a lot of storylines for both of those teams heading into that ball game. There's a head coach that thought he was cooked after his second year as a head coach in this league. The Gatorade bat is on its way. Tradition that started with the great Bill Parcells and the Giants. You talk about old school, new school. Peyton Manning, the number one overall pick in 98 by the Colts. Cam Newton, the number one overall pick 13 years later in 2011 by these Carolina Panthers. Here's one overthrowing everyone in the direction of Michael Floyd. It's been a seven turnover game for Arizona. For this upcoming Super Bowl, it will be the two number one seeds hooking up. It will be the top scoring offense in the NFL against the number one defense. And it will be the fourth straight time the two number one seeds will meet in the Super Bowl last year. It was Seattle and New England. Seattle and the Denver Broncos the year before in the Meadowlands. Second and ten, a minute nine left. David Johnson with a catch along the sideline. You know, you look at Arizona in their season, Joe. We had them in week 16 against the Green Bay Packers, and that's really when they peaked. They played a dominant game. Then week 17, they faced the Seattle Seahawks, did not play well. Of course, they were nipping at Carolina's heels all year long, which forced them to play through week 17 to secure a home field advantage. But a win last week against Green Bay, not a great performance in that win, really, on either side of the ball, and then a complete collapse here tonight, and that's that's hard to live with through a through an offseason, trying to get back and do it all over again a year from now. Now here's a sack to go on top of it, and it belongs to Kyle Love. Under a minute to go. Broncos are going to their eighth Super Bowl. They won Super Bowls 32 and 33. The Carolina Panthers are going to their second. <laughs> Floyd on fourth and eight has a first down. Academic at this point doesn't bother to go out of bounds. They can't wait to get out of here gain a 13 to Floyd Well, there'll be a lot of talk about Super Bowl experience and lack of and I Just think that it all depends on the players depends on the teams And I do not believe for one minute that playoff experience Super Bowl experience any of that's gonna matter one bit here in two weeks 
Floyd stays in bounds. That means this game is over. The Carolina Panthers are NFC champions. And Ron Rivera is going to the Super Bowl. the game just ended was, was this dominant performance was, is this kind of emblematic of the year it's been for all of you uh, we just wanted to come out and do what we was coached all week you know we wanted to be efficient we want to start fast we wanted to keep the pressure on and we wanted to finish most of all ron rivera told me that you got up and spoke to the team at halftime can you share with us what you said it's, it's, it's confidential but, but it <laughs> millions are watching they're excited for this and that, well, what's already understood shouldn't have to be said and you know i don't want the credit you know, this team, we won as a team. We came out here and fought our tails off, and we did what a lot of people said we couldn't do. It's not over yet. Right. It's not over yet. You know, we don't, I don't know who we're playing yet, but uh, we'll be ready to go in two weeks. Well, I, I can tell you, I know you're a big dreamer. You're playing Denver and Peyton Manning. Did you ever think of the Super Bowl you'd oppose him? Oh, wow. Playing the sheriff. But anyway, we're going to live in the moment right now. We're going to be excited. I'm very excited about this organization. Happy for Mr. Richardson, Coach Rivera, and the staff, and especially these teammates of mine, man. It's just great that we all battle, we work so hard, and uh, for it to come into fruition and pay off is great. All right, well, you dab your way to the Super Bowl. Thank yes, you, sir. Ken. Thank you so much. Right, have a good one. We appreciate your time, Joe. Post game show is coming up next. Cam Newton, has he grown as a pocket passer? Has he grown as a leader? No doubt. He takes his team to Super Bowl 50. State Farm postgame show, followed by the X-Files, coming up.